Greetings and welcome to Compliance Training for Tyler Junior College. Campus Safety – How to Respond to an Active Shooter Situation The last thing anyone wants to experience is an active shooter or violent intruder on campus. Chances are you will never find yourself in this situation. However remote the chances are, knowing how to respond should a situation like this occur can mean the difference in life or death. Sadly, shootings and other violent incidents do happen on college campuses. Because of the increased number of violent events, there has been a dramatic increase in campus-wide prevention and crisis training programs. Research shows that these violent incidents are often over in a very short amount of time, usually 15 minutes or less. A study in 2003 of active shooter incidents by the Illinois State Police Academy revealed that, quote, immediate action taken by personnel who are on site when a shooting starts is the most effective way to stop the killing, end quote. You are the first line of defense, and knowing how you will respond is an essential element to survival. Knowing the appropriate actions to take when faced with an active shooter may increase your survivability. Armed individuals on a college campus pose a deadly threat. However, knowing how to assist law enforcement will help authorities neutralize the situation more quickly. Law enforcement officers will respond to the situation based upon information provided to them before or immediately upon their arrival on campus. Responding officers' intent will be to identify and eliminate the threat. What actions should you take when law enforcement arrives on the scene. What can you do to assist these first responders while contributing to your own safety and potentially the safety of your students? What must you do to distinguish yourself from the armed defender? This training is designed to train employees to take direct responsibility for their personal safety and security. Having the proper mindset and the necessary tools and training to react with purpose will maximize the chance of survival in an active shooter situation. How to respond when an active shooter is in your vicinity. Quickly determine the most reasonable way to protect your own life. Get out, hide out, or take out. Shots fired on campus. The last thing you'd expect to hear. The odds of being involved in a situation like this are similar to your chances of being struck by lightning. It's a strange thing about lightning though. We use it as a way to describe something that seemingly has no chance of happening. But how many of us would stand next to a metal pole during a thunderstorm? I'm Randy Spivey. And I'm Jim Sporleder, both from the Center for Personal Protection and Safety. The possibility of being involved in an active shooter incident on campus may be remote but the consequences can be catastrophic. That's why it makes good sense for you to spend some time thinking about what you would do if you found yourself in such a situation. It's a sad fact that shooting incidents do happen on college campuses. Because of that, there has been a dramatic increase in preventive measures such as campus-wide violence prevention programs, efforts to identify troubled students, the development of threat management teams, and a major effort has gone into creating and upgrading notification systems and refining response strategies to get law enforcement on the scene faster. But even the best preventive systems can never be perfect. And let's be candid, if lightning does strike, if an active shooter enters your area on campus, it will be unlike any situation you have ever experienced. And in those initial heart-stopping moments, it will only involve you, other students and faculty, and the shooter. The bottom line is you'll need to take direct responsibility for your personal safety and security. You must develop a survival mindset. The purpose of this training is to help you do exactly that. With the proper mindset and the necessary tools, you'll be better equipped to react with purpose and maximize your chance of survival if you find yourself in a situation like this. Survivors uh, make a commitment. Uh, they take a personal stake in their own safety and security. They do whatever it takes, emotionally, uh, mentally, to survive a critical incident. They ask themselves the what-if question. How would I get out? How would I survive? What would I do? Where would I go? We know that these incidents 
are over in a matter of minutes. Most often, they're over before law enforcement is able to respond. Your survival mindset is like a protective shield comprised of awareness, preparation, and rehearsal. Awareness involves taking the time necessary to gain a basic understanding of an active shooter situation. Preparation is asking yourself the what-if questions that will enable you to develop effective response strategies. The last component, rehearsal, is practicing your plan. Shots fired. Do you know what that sounds like? Unless you see the shooter, you may not recognize the sounds for what they are. Gunshots. For most of us, our experience with gunshots is drawn from movies and television that use special sound effects. That means real gunshots can sound artificial. You could lose precious seconds as you slowly realize that these are, in fact, life-threatening sounds. What was that? That was a gunshot. In a situation like this, most people, when they hear these types of sounds, having maybe never heard gunshots at all in real life, have really no idea what to expect. And it's not unusual for them to think that they're anything but gunshots. I would treat any sound that you may perceive as a gunshot as that and act accordingly. Don't second guess it. Because when you second guess it, those seconds, those seconds count. Those are gunshots. So what should you do in those precious first seconds? You'll need to figure out what's going on and make immediate decisions. How are you going to survive this situation? Will you get out? Is there a path of escape? Will you hide out? Is there a chance to get where the shooter might not find you? Or will you find yourself in a situation where the only option is to try to take out the shooter in whatever way you can? These are serious decisions. That's why the survival mindset is so important to develop. Research shows that there's a real difference between reactions of people who've been trained to face stressful, life-threatening situations and those who have not. The first response is the same in both groups, startle and fear. But the reactions between the two begin to differ immediately after that. People who've gone through training, people like you, feel anxious where the untrained and unprepared begin to feel panic. Trained people begin to recall what they've learned. The untrained fall into disbelief. Is this gunshots? At this point, the divide between the two starts to get wider. I can't believe this is happening. While the untrained are lost in denial, this can't be happening to me. The trained are preparing to act just as they've rehearsed. Finally, as the untrained descend into helplessness, we gotta get out of here. The trained commit to action based on a survival mindset. Those are too close. So that mindset is preparing yourself for the eventuality that it might happen, and that if it does happen, just tell yourself, I will survive. A survival mindset enables you to act quickly and effectively. Let's go back to the foundation, awareness. When you get on a plane and the crew asks you to note the nearest exit, they're not trying to create fear. They're certainly not trying to make you afraid to fly. They're just trying to make you aware, providing information so you can develop the survival mindset for that situation. They know that if there is an emergency, getting you in a predetermined mindset will help you take rapid, effective actions in a stressful situation. They want you to be mindful, not fearful. If you're mindful, you'll be better able to make that first critical decision. Take a tip from the airlines. Like noting the emergency exits, it may only take a minute or two to look around your environment and make some mental notes about how you'd handle an active shooter situation. You may walk into your classroom, take a look at the exits, take a look at what, what is available if I had to hide behind it, if I had to use it as a buffer between an assailant and myself. Well, it's important for students as they walk around their campus to ask the what-if questions. What would they do if somebody came in with a gun and actively started shooting? Think of all the contingencies. What are you going to do? Where are your escape routes? Where's the best access to call 911? Thinking about a situation before it actually develops is the best way to be prepared. Looking at your environment through the lens of survival will help you to take decisive action more quickly. Of course, it's also important to be aware of the people on your campus as well. The fact is, there's no profile of an active shooter. And while we don't want you to walk around campus paranoid that everybody you meet could be a violent offender, we do want you to pay attention to the things that seem out of the ordinary. 
Accepting that a situation like this could happen is the first step toward decisive action. So first, figure out the situation. What's going on? Where is it happening and who's doing it? Build your awareness using all your senses. Do it quickly and stay calm. Trust your intuition, your gut feeling. It's a built-in survival mechanism. Some people say it's knowing without knowing why, and it's an invaluable tool. For example, if you hear something that sounds like it might be a gunshot, assume that it is until you know otherwise. Once you figure out what's going on, you'll be better prepared to take action. If you determine that you can get out to a safer area, then get out and get out fast. Don't wait for others to validate your decision and leave your belongings behind. The best way to survive an active shooter situation is not to be where he is and not to go where he can see you. I'm on campus. I'm in Monroe Hall and um, there's a guy here shooting people and he's in a yellow hat. When you get out, immediately call out to let authorities know what's going on. Do not assume someone else is calling. If you have a cell phone, call 911 or use any campus emergency phone and be ready to give them useful information and be persistent as the phone lines may be jammed with other calls. Remember, no matter how good your school's mass emergency notification system is, they can't alert others until someone provides that first critical information. Calmly and quickly, tell them where you are and what's happening. In some cases, you may not be able to get out. The shooter may be between you and the only exit, or perhaps you would have to enter the area or the hallway the shooter is using. It might be safer for you to remain in place because you're well hidden and well protected. In any case, if you can't get out, then you must find a place to hide out. Find a place that will keep you hidden from the shooter's view and will provide some measure of protection should the shooter fire in your direction. If possible, avoid places that might trap you or restrict your options of movement. Once you've found your spot to hide out, you'll want to keep out the shooter. Hiding in a room that can be locked and that has plenty of things to hide behind is best. Blockade the door with heavy furniture, even if the door can be locked. If the shooter is nearby, though, just lock the door and get totally silent. Turn off any radios or other noise-producing objects in the room that might alert the shooter to your presence. And don't forget to silence that cell phone or pager if you have one. As soon as you have an opportunity, and without attracting the shooter's attention, call out to 911. If there are two or more of you in the same place, do not huddle together for mutual protection or moral support. Spread out. It's too close. Spread out. It's much easier for someone to shoot a group of people who are huddled in one place than if they are scattered around the room. Even if you're in a small room, spreading out will give you options and make it harder for the shooter if he does get into your hiding place. When spreading out in a room, quietly talk about what you'll do if the shooter enters. Whichever action you're taking, whether it's get out or hide out and keep out, you should help out where you can. Help others escape as you go. Help prevent others from entering the danger area. If someone near you has a life-threatening injury, if possible, provide first aid and keep them alive. Let others around you know what's happening and try to maintain calm and help them focus on survival. Keep in mind, as events unfold, you must continue to figure out what's happening so you can adjust your actions accordingly. What if an incident begins while you're on your way to class or walking across campus? If someone starts shooting, stay in motion and find protection. It could be a tree. It could be a wall. Anything that will give you some protection while you figure out the situation and see if you need to do more. Classrooms and lecture halls like this are unique to college campuses and they've also been the location of prior critical incidents. What could you do if a shooter enters a place like this? There might be some opportunities to get out, either through other doors or perhaps a window. But realistically, people in the center of the classroom may not have the opportunity to get out. In that case, your only options might be to spread out, take cover, or take out the shooter. Unfortunately, you may find yourself in the same room as the shooter, maybe even face to face. You have to assume that his intentions are lethal to you, that his presence is a very real threat to your life. If a shooter has decided to shoot everyone he comes across, he'll probably succeed unless you stop him. If you can't hide out and you have absolutely no other option, you may have to confront your assailant. Convince yourself that you have what it takes to survive when your life is on the line. 
This is a life and death decision only you can make. It's so important to understand that in this kind of situation, anything you do or anything you don't do may involve life-threatening risk. If you determine there's no other option than to take out the shooter, then you must be prepared to do whatever is necessary to neutralize the threat. Before the police get there, it's you against that bad guy, and you need to do everything you can to try to stop him because you can't just sit and let him harm you or take your life or take your friend's life. To do this, you'll need to become more aggressive than you ever thought possible. This means you either disrupt his actions or incapacitate him. Throwing things, yelling, using improvised weapons can all be effective in this situation. But total commitment and absolute resolve are critical. I'm going to throw this backpack and I'm going to throw this book at him. And then what are you going to do? Well, then we're going to gang up on him. How many are you in here? 140. How many of him? One. If there are two or more of you, spread out, make a plan, and act as a team to overcome the shooter. Once again, you and the group will have to make a total commitment to your action and do absolutely whatever it takes without hesitation. To understand this better, think of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. Up until that day, the conventional wisdom about plane hijackings was that you should be calm, non-threatening, and wait for the plane to arrive at the hijacker's destination. Obviously, that guidance didn't apply to the hijackings that day. In fact, the passengers of United Flight 93 realized this and used a process like we're describing in this program to figure out what was happening. Once they figured out that the purpose of the hijacking was to kill as many people as possible, the passengers took decisive action to neutralize the threat and prevent further loss of life. During my law enforcement career, I had the opportunity to talk to many people who survived critical incidents. And the commonality they shared was a single-mindedness of purpose to survive. No matter uh, if they were physically injured, uh, they were not going to stop. They were not just going to throw their hands up and quit. They were going to see it through. You have to tell your mind, you know what, I will survive. I will never give up. I will live. There's another possible resolution to an active shooter situation, and that's when law enforcement arrives and takes action to end the shooting. When officers arrive, be prepared to calmly, quickly, and accurately tell them what they need to know. Location of the shooter, number of the shooters if there's more than one, description of the shooter, and number and kind of weapons they have. Police, where's the shooter? I don't know. What's he wearing? He's got like a black shirt and a yellow ball cap on. Do not expect officers to assist you as you get out. Okay, stay here. Their first job is to stop the shooter and end the bloodshed. Law enforcement is trained to go to the sounds of the gunshots and eliminate the threat. If you're in a room and an emergency response team comes in, you must not present a threat to them. Do not point at them or the shooter. Do not scream or yell. Be quiet and compliant. Do exactly as they say. Remember, they have no way of knowing immediately whether you're one of the bad guys or not. The officers have been taught that hands kill, and they're trained to first look at people's hands. So raise your arms, spread your fingers, and show them your hands as you drop to the floor. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you're not a threat yourself, so we need to see your hands. They'll know immediately that you're not armed or aggressive. That will help them focus on anyone who is armed and prevent them from mistaking you for the bad guy in a very dangerous situation. Remember, they have to begin by assuming everyone is a threat. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Go! Don't come running up to us. Don't do anything that we could perceive as threatening. Have your hands in plain view. Uh, be as calm as possible. And then be prepared that uh, we probably won't spend a whole lot of time talking to you because we have to go address the issue. It's important for you to realize there are differences between an active shooter and a hostage-taking situation. The hostage-taker wants to use people as leverage to achieve a goal. This is very different than an active shooter who is there to take lives. If you find yourself in a hostage situation, remain calm, follow directions, and wait for the authorities to resolve the situation. In a hostage situation, you want to exercise patience, you want to be compliant, and you want to give the authorities a chance to reach a negotiated resolution. 
Historically, the vast majority of hostage situations are resolved through negotiations and end peacefully. But, if the situation changes and someone is actually walking around with a gun shooting people, you're in an active shooter situation. The focus of this program has been on surviving an active shooter situation. One of the most effective ways of dealing with this difficult problem is through effective prevention programs. Interestingly, the same survival mindset we've been talking about today can sometimes prevent a situation from becoming violent in the first place. There may be warning signs or behaviors of concern that something is wrong. We do see pre-incident indicators. We do see some behaviors that might suggest the possibility of eventual violence. And many of these offenders oftentimes uh, exhibit angry or argumentative behavior. They often blame others for their problems. They fail to take responsibility for their own actions. They're what we would call injustice collectors. They perceive every slight as a major issue that they have to take action upon. If you're suspicious about something or you really have an uncomfortable feeling, far better to report those types of observations and feelings than to just disregard them and hope that they're going to go away. You have many options when it comes to passing this information on to someone who can act on it. You have your campus law enforcement agencies, you have your RAs, you have your professors, you have your counseling centers. Take advantage of, of one of those options. If you wish to maintain your anonymity, there's ways to do that and still get the information to someone who can take some action on it and potentially prevent a, a tragedy. It's okay to say something. There have been numerous shootings across the country have been prevented by students going, there's something wrong here. We cannot do this by ourselves. This is a community, and in order to keep it safe, we need everybody's help, their eyes and their ears. Hopefully, your college or university already has a violence prevention program in place that provides specific guidance on how to maintain a campus free from threats and violence. Remember, it's everyone's responsibility to keep the campus safe. Shots fired on campus, a sound you hope to never hear. But if lightning does strike, you'll always have a weapon, a survival mindset. You can survive. Let's review. How do we respond to an active shooter situation? Quickly determine the most reasonable way to protect your own life. Remember these three phrases, get out, hide out, or take out. If possible, get out. Have an escape route and a plan in mind. Leave your belongings behind and keep your hands visible. If you must hide out, hide in an area out of the shooter's view. Block entry to your hiding place and lock the doors. Turn out the lights. And if you are not alone, spread out. Do not huddle together. Be sure to turn your cell phone to silent to protect you from being discovered. In some situations, the only option may be to take out the shooter. Attempt this as a last resort or when you are in imminent danger. Attempt to incapacitate the shooter if you have help from others. Act with physical aggression and throw items at the intruder. Whenever it is safe to do so, call 911. When law enforcement arrives on the scene, do not stop to ask officers for help. Simply proceed in the direction instructed or in the direction from which the officers are entering the premises. Remain calm. Follow the officer's instructions. Immediately, raise your hands, spread your fingers, and keep your hands visible at all times. Avoid making quick movements toward the officers. Avoid pointing, screaming, 
or yelling. If possible, provide as much information to law enforcement as you can. Provide the location of the shooter, the number of shooters, the physical appearance of the shooter, the number and types of weapons being used, and the number of potential victims. Remember, the best option is always prevention. If you recognize signs of potential campus violence, please alert someone in authority. Call campus police. Contact an administrator. Your instinct may be the best thing to help you survive. Be prepared. Thank you for completing compliance training. Please complete the quiz in order to receive credit for this training session.